Hello folks, this is uh, Kingy doing Army Man Air Land and Sea Part 8 and uh, this has two elements and then I'll continue my rant of my previous video. Uh, the first thing is stealth uh, which basically means that instead of not just having triggers of if your character gets in such and such area now they have it where if an enemy spots you, uh, it could spawn some more enemies. Like that guy right there behind the wall would come out. Uh, if if that other guy that we just stabbed spotted you and you can't stab that guy, he's permanently affixed to that building. Uh, and this, like I said, I think this is just like a uh, practice for a future level. And there is some save state abuse just due to the frames per second of the destroyed buildings and whatnot. You didn't see it too much last video because, well, it's a fixed path. But this time you can definitely see the stuttering and lag. I think it's just, too, like I said, too much frames. And 3DO trying to uh, poster new graph, you know, texture, texture patches and whatnot, and seeing how that works, I suppose. Uh, nothing wrong with it, just kind of something to be aware of. And the next thing is that the auto aim has uh, been changed to where uh, when you do your manual aim, it'll auto aim instead of doing your manual aim, which is what you intended to do. Uh, what I mean there is uh, you'll see later on that I'll be next to a tank aiming at two guys that are like standing right next to each other and I'll be aiming at the one on the right and yet the auto aim will be aiming on the one to the left so that my bullets don't render. Uh, like I said this is a little further along in the video so don't worry about it. Uh, but anyway uh, back to my complaints and rantings and political blah blahs. Uh, well what I was meaning last video is uh, I, I kind of don't understand this copyright nonsense of if something is like if it was a movie from 1945 or if it was a song that was created by soldiers and had no product being licensing at 1945 to 1940s or something like that that generation is long and gone uh, I think that people should stop with the oh it's in a movie censor uh, nonsense uh, I think uh, basically what I'm thinking is music and film developers are getting a little bit too greedy with their uh, music thing and it's really annoying I, I think that's why you see hear all these well this movie cost five million dollars uh, because probably because they're they're playing some song and they've got like the majority of their fu fees and fines on co uh, silly and ridiculous copyrights of old songs that they've used. <laughs> uh, if, if I mean I think that there should be like some sort of standard of uh, so many years uh, you can have the song under copyright and then after that it becomes free use. Uh, basically what I mean is or I mean or basically like during the lifetime of said singer or something and then if that singer singer can relinquish his rights or something you know uh, rather than a record company. Uh, what I mean is, like, take take Elvis. Uh, a lot of people listen to his music and whatnot, even today, and uh, there's a lot of Elvis impersonators and whatnot. But, uh, I mean, he's not really making any profits off of his stuff anymore. Uh, his family is making money off the Graceland royalties and whatnot. And, uh, uh, basically... Like he can't produce any more music, so he's dead. So, and he can't do any more concerts because he's dead. So they should just free up some of the copyrights off, off his stuff, uh, so people can you know share it and use it and whatnot. Uh, 
I mean, have, still give credit to them, but not, you know, be, oh, you use this song, sue, 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 sort of thing, like they, like we've been experiencing in the YouTube world lately. Uh, another example is that Toei Four Star moment. Um, like I was watching Adult uh, Adult Swim's, uh, oh, what was it, um, Robot Chicken, and they do parodies of DBZ and Mario Kart and all of them all the time. Uh, especially like the Christmas special and whatnot, uh, even the Sailor Moon and stuff, and yet Toei doesn't sue them on that, <laughs> and and they actually are like they're on TV networks, so they're making actual money. They're actually getting profit off of it, versus person on YouTube who is who probably has isn't doing it for any budget other than just to show, you know, their appreciation or just poking fun a little bit at it or in creating like a free base parody. I think Team Four Stars the only income they're probably making is probably uh off of T shirts probably in the uh, Comic Con and whatnot. But uh I mean granted that uh Toei is in Japan and uh YouTube is a United States product and even then uh it should f the different international copyright laws should be established or have like some sort of policy on it of saying this is this and that is that uh because the music industry is getting uh, the filming industry is getting way too greedy for themselves uh they want to talk about uh oh creative salvation or whatnot or equal justice they could free up their justice on f first amendment rights uh like i said i, I apologize for getting all political but it just, that panzer lead thing really annoyed me uh, uh just because it was a german song that was created by uh german soldiers uh during world war 2 and then it was used in an american uh war movie that was pretty much there for propaganda purposes anyway, but still there, uh, that they deserve to uh, censor and uh, copyright, copyright enforce a song uh, that other people made. And yet, you know, and that's kind of the point where I'm getting with that is um, shouldn't the German soldiers be getting – the 90 some odd year old uh, World War II veterans shouldn't they be getting it and not uh, some record company um, I mean it kind of seems a little silly if I mean if if I'm making any sense and another thing is enough with the gotchas um, I think that there should be like YouTube should just have a policy of saying just flat out listening okay here's all the songs you can use Here's all the songs you can't use, and there you go. Uh, pretty much just let everybody know all the songs that have a current copyright, uh, because everybody everybody kind of has an idea, like Warner Music Group. Everybody was barraged at it before. Now we know not to mess with any Warner Music Group, but they even still, they still hit us. But they should just have record companies put a list of, here's all the music where we have copyrighted and nobody can use sort of statement and then there you go um, and so that that puts a burden on them to instead of them going so happy on YouTube uh, or, or YouTube can just have this clever saying well here's a site saying here's a list of that's easy to find of everything that's copyrighted and there you go uh, also, this Creative Commons thing this is a little confusing. Uh, I don't know how to set my Creative Commons for not, but if you've been noticing, a lot of my videos uh, have been Creative Commons. Uh, basically, what my friend sort of said and what I've been looking up is Creative Commons is basically just uh, stuff where it lets people know that you're allowed to you allow other people to reuse your stuff. Like if somebody wants to uh, do sort of a report on how much of a fail less player I am because I know there was a couple people who did that 
uh, they can go ahead. I, I would happily let go ahead and feel honored that they would satire me on YouTube. That's perfectly fine. Uh, like and like uh, for my Fire Emblem vids, I know I haven't posted that many of them, but uh, for those, I put Creative Commons there for in case people want to create, you know, use the game sprites for their uh, forms and whatnot. Uh, I know people like to do animated sprites and spriting and make custom sprites. Uh, so I leave it open for them because I know that's not a well to uh, play. I mean, find the game to um, find translated. And there's another thing too. Uh, I think that there should be. Uh, there, there's this annoying little uh, organization that's based on gaming, where uh, and it's rather recent. Uh, for those who actually you know uh, play ROMs and emulators and whatnot, uh, basically they're like a law group for them, uh, and an advocacy group for them. Uh, basically, it, I kind of find it a little silly that uh like if you have a game developer or a game company that had passed on or uh you know you're not doing a remake on uh, you shouldn't copyright slap copyright on it right there like uh i don't know like let's say somebody did pong it, it, you know it's the atari very very first very 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 first game of pong I mean, uh, and then let's say somebody nowadays created a fancier Pong. Uh, then that means that people who want to do LPs of Pong can't download the Atari Pong because there's a new remake Pong for the PlayStation 3 or Nintendo Wii or whatnot. Uh, I, I know I'm making it sound silly, but that's really how I feel about it is um, it needs to you know, have like a checker and a balance of so many years, and then okay, and like if it's a remake, that's fine. It is, you know, uh, renew the copyright that way. That's fine. But just because one game shares a title with another game, a set of games, you shouldn't copyright all of them. You should just copyright the one that you remade. It, it, it's just simpler and easier that way on everybody. Uh, but anyway, this will be Kinky signing out. Uh, 